Ahoy there, fish folk, Strawberry no here. Do you find yourself feeling like a complete drag of society? Has capitalism chewed through your eternal soul and spit you out hopeless and broken? Do you make decisions thinking that it cannot get any worse and somehow it always does get a lot worse? Good! That probably means you are working your ass off for someone else's profit, just like the system intended. And yeah, also maybe this game is for you, I don't know. Whoa! That was weird, my Lux Maxing Skibidi Taktua Pild Rizzlers, ain't that right chat? Didn't mean to bring down the vibes, I'm just here to review a game I recently finished. And that game is another crap's treasure. Now I might have overdid it a little with the title in the vain attempt to appease the SEO slot machine that is the search algorithm, sorry about that, but it's YouTube's parkour world and I'm just a noob jumping for for the chicken, but I think all that's there is true regardless. Another Crab's Treasure is a game that somehow completely flew under my radar when all the big names covered it, and I just sorta picked it up now because I plan to rank my favorite games of this year, so I'm going through everything good I missed. And this game is certainly very good in the weirdest way possible. The very upfront and central fact is that this is a Souls-like, so you would think combat is the driving force behind this being good, but I kinda don't care about it. I mean, sure, Souls like combat is great, it's certainly better than walking on a brick wall that barely reacts to you being there, or just bullying every single enemy in the game with no in between, but me beating bosses just sorta took a backseat at some point to the two parts I enjoyed about this experience the most, that being the world and the platforming. The second one is probably the more shocking one, I mean, when you hear platforming and souls like it probably ain't gonna bring up any pleasant memories bro just jump God, shut the fuck up how okay can, how, how, didn't you, you we bro what bro what but parts of this game really reminded me of things like Psychonauts, just climbing around this fantastic, colorful world, marveling at the developer's genius of adapting random human junk into platforms and hazards. It also reminded me of walking around the maps in 3D Worms games, which is also a great little blast from the past. And there is something truly refreshing about a Souls-like that has good gameplay sections that are not combat centered to break up the constant fighting, but it comes with a caveat. There are some platforming sections with enemies present, or fighting sections on uneven ground, or sometimes even on small platforms. Those universally suck absolute shit. I mean, there's no need to even describe it. Dodging projectiles that will shoot you out of the air while platforming and fighting on tiny platforms where camera often gets shoved up your ass feels just as bad as you can imagine it. Moving on to the second thing, which is the world. Yeah, the world of Another Crab's Treasure is fucking fantastic. It tells the story of sea critters that use human trash as currency, building materials, clothes, food, basically anything and everything. And going around and just absorbing in the environment, again, really brings me back to Psychonauts in a way. Nowhere else you will be be enamored by this more than in New Carcinia. This location is central to the story and serves as a hub with shops and a blacksmith for the protagonist to use. And it's just a joy to experience it. The upper crust, which is where citizens with some trash to their name live, is comprised almost entirely of buildings made out of glass bottles. You can find a lot of really funny little visual bits, like the toilet brush palm tree hedges made out of those green and yellow dish sponges, lots of little flavor like that. And then the lower crust is essentially the city slum, where all those downtrodden and worse off live. It's completely in the shade of the upper crust and all of the buildings are made out of soggy cardboard. The environmental storytelling is brilliant throughout the whole game from beginning to end in my honest little opinion. The combat is like I said a perfectly serviceable souls-like, a little on the basic 
toxic side with a lot of mashing the attack when the enemy opens up. But the game has a central gameplay mechanic tied to it that puts an extremely fun twist on the formula. There are no weapons in the game, you only have your fork. On top of that you get adaptations that work almost like Ashes of War from Elden Ring or Combat Arts from Sekiro. They are essentially just like a special combat move, each with its unique properties. Truth to be told, I almost never use those because the real star of the show are the shells you collect throughout the game. Krill is at his most vulnerable when you are shell Less. Thus you should always pick up any glowing trash from the ground to act as your shield. The shells have their own life bar and will completely break when it runs out. But usually there are some alternatives scattered about so you can scuttle towards them and not run around naked. And it's always good to pick them up because they provide a flat damage reduction from just existing on your back. Every single shell has a different value of durability from glass that breaks in instantly to metal that can take quite a beating. They each also have their weight class which affects how good your dodge roll is. And last but definitely not least, they have one of 23 unique spells attached to them. Those use mana and the truly genius part of this game is that this mana is generated while attacking enemies. 4 landed hits grant you 1 mana point. Spell effects range from being a simple buff like you attack faster or your free next blocks give you complete invincibility, which quickly turned out to be my favorite, also pretty broken as it allows you to ignore a lot of the game mechanics. And then they spiral out of control to things like turn into a tornado hitting anyone around or sonic spin dash into enemies. This one is also super fun to use because any hit you receive during this attack counts as you blocking so just, you know, taking away some of your shell durability instead of your HP. I was completely shocked when I beat the game, convinced that Fimble with the aforementioned consequence free blocking and its medium roll is the most useful shell in the game. But no, it turns out from the posts I seen online, almost everyone developed their own favorite. Rollout, like I mentioned, seems pretty popular. Ink smokescreen produced by the... Um, Among Us plushy shell thing also found its fans. A lot of people were into the probiotic skill which just acts like lifestone from Dark Souls, slowly giving you back your HP. Experimenting with what shell worked best on the 20 or so insanely unique bosses was extremely fun. And if I ever gotten frustrated or wished some areas were just over already, I knew there are accessibility options to completely customize your experience. Things like you take and deal more or less damage, your shell takes less damage and ending on the best accessibility option I have ever personally seen in my life, which is give Krill a gun. The game sadly is not perfect though, first and foremost it's kinda disappointing how unbelievably buggy it is, it's so easy to just get stuck in geometry and it happened almost every time I was trying to platform up some ledge and explore. And while I think the platforming is great for the most part, the game just has some wonky physics that get annoying as hell man. It has been like 5 months past release, there have been a lot of fixes from what I have have seen on the game's Steam News Hub in the first three months of the game's lifespan, but suddenly the entire August and September and now half of October, it's radio silence from the devs, so I guess this is the final product and it won't get much better. And it's insane for me to think that it supposedly was far worse at launch. I tanked an entire point out of the final score for a lot of those little annoyances from this, and I can only wonder how much I would hate this game five months back when it was this buggy. I know it's an indie venture, so set your expectations accordingly, obviously, but I played a lot of indie titles that were better polished at their 1.0 release, not to mention five months after the game's launch. Still, this game is definitely worth your time as is, and I would gladly rate it 7 out of 10. 
Thanks for watching my review of another crab's treasure to the end. It sounds a little bit cliche, but I truly appreciate the support. If you would like more content like this, then like and subscribe, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one.